What is going on guys and welcome to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video. Today we're going to do something a little different and we are going to look at some of the statistics of the game. What is the top leadership ability used in the game? What character would that be? What is the most used squad composition? What character overall is used in the top 10 of Arena most? And then we're going to look at the Zeta and Omega report and see which one of those are used most and where as well. By the way, if you go to swgoh.gg, you plug in your account information, you can sync your account, and you'll be able to look at all of this information as well. I just decided to go over it together with all of you if you don't want to take the time to do that and to have a little fun as well. So when you look at this, you can tell that probably the highest percentage are the characters that are working best in the arena at the moment to get to 1 to 10. As you can see here, it says that I have the rank 1 to 10 in meta report, so this would be rank one through 10 obviously in the arena and leadership ability right here the number one overall now first of all this is based on 12,827 arena teams this is not the whole community but it's a pretty darn good representation of what it is the best leadership or i should say the most used leadership character and ability is emperor palpatine he has 5,220 leadership spots in these one in ten leaders and he's pretty good. I use him myself as a leader. He right now is the current meta used with his Sith counterparts and some Empire counterparts. So he's in 41% of the teams. We have Jedi Training Rey, who's 22%. She used to be the highest. She's gone down a little bit, but she's still viable. She's in 2,884. Rex is in third at 19%, 2,418. He was lower until Palpatine came out, and he went back up there again. He has some good counters, especially in my squad. There's a lot of Rex teams in the top of my arena. Commander Luke Skywalker is fourth. He's only in 9%, let me tell you. Let's go back six months ago. He was easily number one. He, Oh, man, let's not even think of what he was there. Then Mother Talzin, Ashaz, Asajj Ventress, Grand Admiral Thrawn, Akbar, Kylo Ren and Mast, General Veers, Vader, Chirpa, Maul, Wedge, etc., not going to go on from there those are the top leadership characters that are used in the one through ten ranks in arena by the way if you're looking to you know gain more ground in arena yourself look at this use this to your advantage go hey a lot of people use emperor palpatine in their one through ten leadership i mean so th these people are getting first in the arena you know first through ten and go maybe you know maybe maybe i should go maybe i should do that but also be unique. Don't forget to be unique because that's what makes the game fun. If everybody runs the same team all the time, that would be stale, boring. Try things up. Throw different things in. Do what works for you and how you mod your characters. Next, we're going to do the top team composition in ranks 1 through 20 in squad arena. And the number one team used with 329% in a count of 2,567 is a Palpatine lead, of course, Vader, Nihilus, Thrawn, Scion. I also run that team. But every once in a while, I'll switch it out. The True Nightmare team takes out Thrawn and puts in Sith Trooper. That's what I use. But let me tell you, against some Rex lead teams, I definitely throw in Thrawn. He's a great character. That is the number one team. The next number one team, or that number two team, I should say, is Jedi Training Rey, General Kenobi, R2, Thrawn, and BB-8. That is considered the best composition to put around your Jedi Training Rey. It still can get first in arena. It falls a lot more on defense than it used to because of the Palpatine teams, but it's still a very viable team to get first. Then in third place with 91%, 713 count, we have a Rex lead with Solo, General Kenobi, Thrawn, CLS. Great team. Rex used to be the meta way back in the day. He took kind of a break for a little bit. Well, you know, we had Commander Luke Skywalker and Jedi Training Ray, and now Palpatine's back, and boom, Rex is back. Awesome. Then we have the Emperor... Palpatine lead, Vader, General Kenobi, Nihilus, and Thrawn. If you throw in General Kenobi to any team, you're going to be fine. Trust me. Just replace one character you don't like. It'll work. He's a great character. Next, we still have the Titans team, and that is 65%, 510 count. CLS lead, Han Solo, General Kenobi, R2, Thrawn. That was the meta for the longest time. It was the best team to get played first in Arena. After that, we have the Emperor lead team with Vader, Nihilus, Thrawn, which is pretty typical. And then they throw in Solo. You want to get that offense up in there. And then when you get to number one, you probably want to switch in a different character to try to get a better defense. Next, we have Emperor. This is, this is the team I run. This is what I consider the true Nightmare team. Emperor, Vader, Nihilus, 
Sith Trooper, Thrawn at 39. Oh, I mean, sorry, I'm incorrect. That is not the team that I run. I have Scion in there instead of Thrawn. So this isn't technically the true Nightmare team, but this is still a very good team overall. Emperor, Palpatine, Vader, Nihilus, Trooper, Sith Trooper, and Grand Admiral Thrawn. Then we have the Rex lead, Talzin, General Kenobi, Thrawn, and Wampa. Wow, that team can be a nightmare to take care of. I find I have to have a fast Thrawn in there to usually fracture Talzin or Wampa, or sometimes I do Rex first just so he can't get his tenacity up. Then we have Gen uh, Jedi Training Ray. Raid Han, General Kenobi, R2, and BB-8, 260. That's still a pretty frequent team. Let's see. We've gone through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And now we have Emperor Palpatine, Darth Vader, Shore Trooper, Nihilus, and Thrawn coming in at number 10. And the True Nightmare team, I think this comes in at number 12 or 13. I lost count. That's 25% there. Emperor, Vader, Nihilus, Trooper, Scion. That's the team I use the most, but like I said, I throw in Thrawn a lot. So as you can see, the Palpatine lead, Jedi Training Ray um, lead, Rex, and a CLS still mingles around there. Those are the top four. It's a lot more diversified than it was with just Jedi Training Ray, Jedi Training Ray, Jedi, and Knights. You know, you threw the Knight Sisters in there. They're falling way out of favor because Emperor Palpatine can just kick them around. So those are the squads used in the top one through 10 ranks. Again, look at this and go, hey, maybe I wanna work around this. Don't forget, you wanna make sure you Zeta the characters that are most important for you to get to number one in arena. So you want it, obviously Zeta, Emperor Palpatine's leadership ability, if you wanna use him in your team. So that's pretty standard. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the top characters used overall in rank one through 10. And this is interesting, and I think it's a lot of fun to look at. The one, number one character used most in all of the squads, ranked 1 through 10, no matter what composition, is Grand Admiral Thrawn. And he's used in 72% of the teams in a count of 9,281. That put, in my opinion, that would make him the best character in the game because of his versatility and viability. He may not, you know, be the best specific damage dealer overall, but how he's used throughout all kinds of teams makes him the be best player to farm in the game if you get phoenix you want to go after them to get thrown because he's used in so many top teams and so many other teams besides that general kenobi is a no-brainer he's used the second most in 49 percent before the sith medic came out here i'm gonna say he was probably first palpatine is third trust me he was not in this top 10 uh before the sith meta nihilus he could be hovering around here for a while Vader wasn't, now he's back. R2, definitely. In fact, if I could go back before the Sith meta, I'll say this a lot. R2 would probably be 90%. Seriously, he was used the most in the top 10. Darth Scion, a harder character to get. I, of course, bought him and have him to seven stars. He is in the top 10. And we have Han Solo. He used to be higher. Jedi Training Ray, BB-8, Commander Luke, Rex, Mother Talzin, etc. So... The, inter the big thing you want to take out of this is Grand Admiral Thrawn is number one, and that's because he can fit into any team possible, whether it's a light side team, whether it's a dark side team. Put him in with Night Sisters. That fracture ability and his ability to swap turn meter and cleanse, it is the best support character in the game by far. Really fun to play with. Definitely farm Phoenix. If you haven't, that should be your top priority. Now, we are going to look at the top Zetas in the game. And the most stated character is Commander Luke Skywalker. It binds all things. That is his third Zeta. It's not his leadership ability, but it's one that can act as one. And it says whenever Luke resists a detrimental factor, he covers 5% protection. Whenever Luke inflicts a debuff, he gains 10% turn meter. Other allies gain half that amount. So he has 6.27% of all Zetas total in the game. Think of all the characters. That's quite a high amount. 85.02% of year 10 Commander Luke Skywalkers have this ability Zedad. 78% of all Commander Luke Skywalkers owned have this ability Zedad. Of course, he has his other two abilities, but that this is the number one Zedad ability in the game. Number two is R2-D2, and I can understand that. Number crunch, man, giving all those bonus stats to the droid, Republic, Rebel, and Resistance allies, awesome it's in 6.19 or 6.19 percent of all zetas in the game again that's pretty high 67.74 of all r2d2s have this zeta and 80 percent of r2d2s over gear 10 do 
That's and by the way, this is a for if you're losing using a light side team, this is a no-brainer must Zeta ability, not only for arena but for all areas of the game. Raids, Galactic War if you still have to do them. Incredible. Next, Darth Vader inspiring through fear. This this when the game first came out and he got his rework, this was probably the highest. Then people stopped doing it for the longest time. And then when the Sith raid came out or in the in the uh, Sith meta came out, they probably started zading him again. He has 6.12% of all zaders in the game. 61% of all Darth Vaders are zaded, and 66% of all Darth Vaders over gear 10. He's Palpatine is the leader now usually. But Vader's inspiring through fear, especially if you use him with Wampa in the raids. He can do lots of damage. I can understand why he's in the top three. Han Solo shoots first. This may be the best overall Zeta in the game. Plus 10% critical chance. And the first time each t turn Han uses his basic attack, he d attacks again. Okay? Attacking twice, even with a little bit um, less damage in the second huge deal 5.29 percent of all zetas 65 percent of all han solos and 80 percent of all gear 10 plus han solos and this is the only zeta he has kylo ren outrage understandable i'm not going to go over it as much he used to be probably the top new characters have come out since then but a lot of people when they first got a zeta to him 4.57 percent of all zetas in the game are used on him 53 percent of kylo ren's have him zated i do not finn balance tactics for the longest time this was, and still in some cases, could be the best Zeta in the game. I know said, said that about Han Solo, but as a leadership ability, this is most likely it. It allows you to take a Gear 8 resistance team and be able to go into territory battles or even certain arena teams and keep spamming that expose and turn meter and take them out without taking damage if you take do it correctly. 4.5% of all Zetas, 59% of all fins. Next, combat analysis. Wow. R2-D2's second Zeta, uh, Zeta here, or if it's in line with his first, is also in incredible. If you have R2-D2 in your lineup, in the light side lineup, if you do not have these two uh, abilities Zeta, are you good? Like, seriously. When he's active, whenever a light side ally scores a critical hit, dispel all debuffs on them. You're cleansing, uh, you know, without having to use an ability. It, it, it's incredible. It's a passive cleanse. You need to have this. Then Emperor Palpatine, Emperor of the Galactic Empire, 3.69% of all Zetas. And remember, this one that came up about, about three months ago. No, not three months ago. Jeez Louise. One to two months ago. So this has been getting up there. 37% of all Emperor Palpatines have that Zeta. Then Commander Luke Skywalker learned Control, Darth Maul Dancing Shadows, Grand Admiral Thrawn Ebb and Flow. I got a lot of heat in my top 10 Zeta video I made, and I said this in another video because I did not have him in the top 10. He should be. This ability, especially in raids, and for him to gain the counter chances and nasty while enemies are fractured, and whenever another Empire ally uses a special ability, the fractured enemies and Thrawn loses 15% turn meter. Great ability. It should be in the top 10. Barriss Offie, Swift Recovery. Good character. Uh, she was much more viable before Jedi Training Ray came out commander luke skywalker rebel maneuvers I, and then interesting savage oppress brute that's actually a pretty good zeta qui-gon jinn agility training emperor palpatine crackling doom and then we have the jedi training ray leadership ability this is pretty low uh, far down here in my opinion 2.2 percent of all zetas and it's absolutely needed to run a jedi training ray team i'm not going to go over any many more i just want you to know oh general veers by the way which is here i also got heat on reddit for not putting him in the top 10 zetas and i should have i was incorrect i am a man that will admit my mistakes and barris and qui-gon jinn should have been taken out of there for general veers and grand Admiral Thrawn. so that is the top zetas in the game again come to swgoh.gg put in your lineup put in your information put in your team and look at all this yourself. The last thing we'll do is we'll, we'll look over the uh, Omegas. I'm just going to go over these quickly because they're not really that, you know, like down to not, 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 not as important. Force Crush with Darth Vader is used the most. Obviously, he's one of the first characters you had in the game. Culling Blade with Darth Vader. I interesting, Darth Vader has all the Omegas in the top three. Palpatine has the next top three. Biggs. R2, Wedge, Wedge, R2, R2. A lot of the same characters here. This one isn't as important. You guys know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I really hope you en enjoyed this video. I really like the idea of looking at the statistics of the game and using them to your own advantage to be able to help you create your own teams. By the way, SWGOH.GG is the best resource ever for a game. I wish all games had a, 
uh, information like this. Now, it can tell you what mods you have. It's because Galaxy Heroes doesn't have a good mod management uh, system yet. Your characters, levels, what you need. Incredible website. Big shout out to them. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the subscribe button. And by the way, now you have to click on that little notification bell. So every time I put up a video, you can go, I got to find some time to watch Thunderwack. So please press that. It's a big deal. Because you want to know every video I post and you want to be able to watch it as soon as possible. There's going to be so much more content coming out soon and a lot of different variety of things. So, may the force be with you. And again, don't forget to subscribe.